Hey Trails Collective, Ian here. I'm excited to be kicking off the gear review portion of the Trails Collective and talking to you a little bit about a product that comes from a company with deep northeastern roots, the Mad River. Oi, not that Mad River. We're talking about the Saucony Mad River TR. Yeah, that Mad River. Saucony, founded along the banks of the Saucony Creek in Kutztown, Pennsylvania in 1898, and with headquarters in Lexington, Mass, goes back a ways in our region. Uh, and I was excited they created a namesake shoe uh, based on our area uh, in the Mad River uh, that which released in the fall or summer fall of 2019. Uh, it's been my go-to shoe uh, for 2019 and going into 2020. Uh, shoe with the namesake rooted in the Mad River. Howdy friends, Brian Fleshing of Mad Wait, River Outfitters. no, not that Mad River. You know, we're talking about the Mad River Valley, Vermont. This one. Mad River Valley. I mean, hands down, it is a playground. So the Saucony Mad River, what makes it um, my favorite uh, shoe of 2019 and what am I looking for? Uh, first and foremost, the shoe just has to fit my fairly straight foot and it's got to be fairly versatile. Uh, we've got a lot of trails around where I'm based in Ithaca, New York, uh, and I fan out quite a bit. Uh, but the reality is that uh, I'm using it just as much for technical single track as I am in making the connections on fairly hard pack. Uh, the shoe's got to be versatile, it's got to flow, uh, and I want it to work on varied terrains. Um, Saucony, I'm stoked that you created uh, this one for 2019, and let's dig into it uh, a little bit. Uh, so even though this is the Mad River uh, 1, or the first generation, uh, it's not new in terms of fit, design, and function in the Saucony lineup. Uh, I was excited in 2015 uh, when we brought into the shop the first of its uh, lineage, uh, which was the uh, Nomad. Uh, Nomad, I thought, was a, a great shoe. It was unique to Saucony, uh, and then it had a more oblique toe box design, a uh, little bit wider midfoot, uh, came in fairly light, fairly nimble, uh, midsole foam was responsive, it had a fairly low profile uh, outsole lug configuration which made it really versatile, uh, and I really liked the shoe. Uh, what I think hung it up and where it didn't last very long in the lineup was that aesthetically it was really polarized and really pretty ugly. Uh, the combinations were actually pretty awful, whether we're talking about this one, this one, uh, this one, this one, this one. 2017 it was replaced by the Koa, and the Koa had a TR version uh, as well as an ST version. Uh, the the uh, TR version, uh, a fairly good update in terms of some uh, design improvements, uh, a little bit more functional uh, lug configuration, aesthetics were a bit better. Uh, an ST version was just a little bit more aggressive uh, with eight millimeter lugs. Uh, both of them I still really liked, uh, but both of them had fairly, I think, small market shares with retail stores. Uh, most, I think, independent, uh, at least specialty stores are carrying maybe the Saucony Peregrine, uh, but not a lot beyond that. And so it just didn't really, I think, get out there as much as it probably could have. Uh, so queuing into the release of the Mad River, at least when I looked at it a little bit uh, about a year before it came out, uh, I was really looking forward to it. When I first got it and out of the box, it was, uh, it was awesome. I was like, this is... Um, this is a good update. Uh, what it still gave me was uh, an oblique, uh, still toe box design. Uh, it fit my fairly square midfoot. I'll show you a clip here of my foot laying over the insole in terms of uh, how it did. Uh, the mid, the uh, midfoot rather uh, wrap was a little bit wider than they used in the Peregrine. Uh, it felt really good on my foot. And it also maintained, I think, some of the uh, specs that I liked in the uh, precursors or the prior generations. Uh, Mad River 1, in terms of some of those specs, uh, weighs in around 10.2 ounces in men's with a size 9, and roughly, I think it's 9 ounces in a women's size 7. Uh, it's got a uh, stack height of roughly 25 millimeters in the heel, 21 in the forefoot for an offset of 4, uh, and it feels really pretty kind of light and nimble uh, on, the, on the foot or on my feet. In terms of some of the updates they made in the lineage, uh, moved from an EVA to a Power Run uh, midsole foam. Uh, the Power Run midsole 
uh, was overlaid with a uh, topper of Everrun, which made it uh, feel right out of the box a bit softer. Uh, but the Power Run, I've been really happy with. I think it was the, the brainchild of uh, this guy uh, running uh, in the secretive Falcon Labs uh, in the Northeast. Uh, and it's, it's been really good. Uh, the cushioning is good in terms of feeling like a road shoe to a certain extent out of the box, but the durability has been solid and it's firm enough to be responsive on the trails. So I've been uh, really happy with it uh, in that regard in an update in the series. If we look at some of the other uh, specs of the shoe uh, and uh, branching off from the midsole, uh, what, we, what I also find is that under the shoe, they cut a, a center groove uh, in the heel or the hind foot. Uh, that allows it some flexibility in terms of heel contact, and I think more flexible than some others in this category, such as the Trail Kyger. It just feels smoother in heel transition. Uh, the outsole rubber uses a power track uh, material, at least what they're calling it. Uh, I feel like it's fairly par for the course. As I'll show you in a clip here, in one of my first, I think, test runs where I was really seeing what it would do in, in some of the, I guess to a certain extent, more uh, extreme terrain in terms of slickness in our backyard, uh, one of the creek crossings over wet bluestone, uh, it didn't do so well. Uh, clip here. Ooh, yeah, didn't feel so good. A little wet on that one. Uh, that was the first, I think, run at it. Uh, and where I think the, the power track ends up being fairly light, fairly soft versus a compound like Vibram, it still doesn't stick uh, that great. Uh, the outsole configuration uh, uses a combination of a couple things here. It uses a fairly classic chevron uh, design uh, and it's multi-directional and it's got a basically an outer and inner layer of these thermoplastic basically claws and what i found is it really allows the shoe to grip really well if you're ascending uh, and then it also allows it to be fairly smooth and compressed when you're descending i think it works really well in terms of that versatility angle uh, it, it may come up short if you're in uh, thicker mud maybe slicker mud uh, the reality is the four and a half millimeter lugs, which these are roughly, uh, only, I guess, dig so deep. Uh, but for what they are, uh, they're pretty, I, I think they're pretty versatile. Something unique, I think, in what Saucony really celebrates in terms of its marketing is the, uh, I guess, customization of the shoe. And when we're looking at the outsole of the shoe, and when you, when you first open it up, what you'll find is they've got uh, two different uh, markings on the underfoot. One is guide holes if you wanted to put in your own uh, additional drainage holes. And I played with that a little bit. And what I found was that uh, I just don't think it really made a significant difference in terms of drainage. Uh, what I also found, uh, and in the image that maybe I'll plug here, was uh, after uh, one of the races this past weekend that some of those holes clogged, clogged up a little bit with uh, dirt just from the trail. One of the other pieces they do is they also give you the template or the blueprint for uh, adding in your own hex head sheet metal screws. Uh, that piece I have been pretty happy with. Uh, so I did it some in testing and then I also uh, used it for uh, the frozen snot trail race in Pennsylvania uh, just this past weekend. And what I found was they actually work really well. They are flush enough to the shoe where they don't really sit out. So for the opening and closing uh, chip seal or kind of hard pack miles in that race, it didn't feel too obnoxious on the road. I didn't feel it too much. Uh, but what it did uh, provide was additional security over the fairly uh, technical rock and particularly some of it that was covered in snow and ice uh, on the course. It definitely gave me an added feel of security and gripped pretty well. I lost some of the uh, hex heads uh, somewhere in the race, and that may speak to the dimensions of the screws. Saucony uh, indicates that uh, you should use uh, a number eight, three eighth inch uh, hex head sheet metal screw. And what I think you'll find for most people is you go into stores and that, uh, that dimension is kind of tough to find. You'll find either a number six, three eight inch or a number eight, half, uh, half inch. And so I went uh, with the number six, three eight inch, just hoping that it wasn't gonna jab my foot. Uh, the head isn't that much different, uh, and I think that they worked really well. So uh, looking at the underfoot, you'll also see this groove right here, which is meant to take uh, the strap for a gaiter. And then that would maybe take us over to the upper, looking at the customization pieces here. Uh, so gaiter strap underneath, 
uh, loop in the front here. Uh, also to attach the, the gator uh, connection. And then you've got uh, pull loops, tongue, heel, allows it for uh, quick on and off in terms of the slip. Uh, the customization piece that Saucony references in some of the marketing is they're giving you two options for the lace holes. Uh, they're giving you uh, the inner corded lace uh, holes here, uh, and they're giving you the more traditional vamp uh, holes or uh, eyelets cut into the outside. I don't know if it makes a significant difference in playing with it a little bit. I think if somebody has a fairly uh, high instep and they want more berth, you could maybe use the center cords. If they want a little bit more uh, of a tighter vamp uh, and compression and hug on the foot, you could use the outer lace holes and really snug that down uh, a bit better. They also have a lamination uh, to the toe here. I think that's adding a little bit of durability to the shoe, uh, more than it is really uh, protection from kicking things. One of the things that maybe I'd like to see different in, in uh, maybe a future version of a Mad River uh, would be to uh, extend the, the rubber that's coming up from the outsole on that toe cap. Uh, I kicked quite a few rocks, for instance, just this past weekend, uh, particularly on descents uh, at frozen snot, uh, and my toes are feeling pretty bashed at the moment. Uh, and in terms of that protection, in this model, uh, as well as I believe they're Peregrine, they don't use rock plates or uh, shields in the shoe. And from uh, my opinion, I feel like rock plates are, in many cases, overrated and utilized and put into shoes. I think for the 0.01% that you're going to need that rock plate for uh, a jab to your metatarsals, uh, you're sacrificing, I think, uh, flexibility, uh, softness, fluidity to the forefoot uh, in the rest of the 99.9% .9 of the miles. Uh, so I'm good without having it, uh, without a rock plate in there, um, but I know that can be important to uh, some people. So the shoe, I think, has felt great. Saucony, I'm really excited about what you designed here. Already in this lineage, it's more successful than its predecessors. There is a Mad River 2 that's going to launch in July of 2020. Uh, it's going to come out with more of a knit upper, uh, as well as a non-gusseted tongue. And speaking to this feature, this is one thing that I really liked out of the box. Uh, there are some reviewers that uh, maybe got some bunching uh, in this gusseted tongue that weren't a big fan. I personally like it. It's got a sock-like fit. Uh, I don't find that it bunches, and I think it's really successful in keeping debris uh, out of the shoe. Uh, so I'm a little bit bummed that that gusseted tongue is going to go away in the second version. I think that's a bad call on Saucony's point, uh, but so it goes. And then with a the knit upper, I'm not sure there either. Uh, in the store the past couple years, in general, people haven't really been fans uh, of the knit upper versus a traditional mesh. And I think that this has worked pretty well and I haven't had durability issues. Uh, so I don't know if I love that as well. So for any of you out there uh, that are looking to maybe go in or interested on the Mad River, I'm still might be preferring the Mad River 1, uh, but I'll also be excited to get the Mad River 2 on my feet when it releases this summer. And then we'll weigh back in uh, there as well. In terms of the durability of the shoe, I've not always had great success with the durability of Wolverine products and shoes, uh, but that's, um, they've been not terrible, just not great. Uh, so uh, with this one, I've had um, a little bit of stitches go around the heel collar, a uh, little bit on the heel pocket uh, where it really uh, broke down a bit. Uh, one customer brought them back early with a little bit of delamination around the toe guard. Uh, but by and large, I think the shoe has held up really well. Uh, the Power Run midsole, I think, has, has been great in terms of durability. Uh, I don't feel like it's compressed or bottomed out uh, nearly as much as some of the other trail shoes that I've had in the past. So I've been really happy with that. Outsole rubber being fairly soft. I have shaved it off uh, like I often do with uh, shoes in just in terms of my heel contact there. Um, but nothing too uh, remarkable or, or uh, as an outlier. Uh, so some comparison sets, where's the uh, Mad River 1 really stack up? Uh, if I were to compare it to maybe the closest shape and competitor, uh, it would have been the Nike Trail Kyger 5. Uh, both similar in terms of the oblique uh, toe box design. Where I feel like uh, I've really preferred the Mad River 1, uh, one is in terms of outsole configuration. A little bit better, a little bit more functional than the Saucony, or I mean the uh, Nike Trail Kyger. And I also feel like uh, the midsole foam, a little bit softer and particularly a little bit smoother in transition around the heel than the Kyger. 
the uh, Topo uh, MT3, another one with an oblique toe box design, similar offset in terms of heel to toe ratio as the Kyger had as well. I feel like the Saucony also has a little bit better uh, outsole traction to it, a little bit softer, a little bit smoother uh, underfoot, uh, and I like the materials in the upper a little bit better in the Mad River. Uh, the Merrill uh, Agile Synthesis X, also similar heel to toe ratio, fairly light, fairly soft underfoot. Uh, I just feel like the Saucony has proved to be a bit better in terms of durability, a little bit uh, smoother, softer uh, underfoot, uh, and just a little bit more protective, uh, particularly in the Merrill uh, shoe here. When I got over some rocky terrain, I was for sure feeling the, uh, the shots and the rocks, a little bit better protection in the Saucony Mad River. And then the uh, maybe last one, company really known for also an oblique toe box design, uh, the Ultra Lone Peak 4.5. A uh, little bit lower heel to toe ratio, uh, not too much different in stack height, a little bit lower, uh, comes in a little bit lower than Saucony's. I just feel a lot more consistent cushioning under the Mad River than I do in the Lone Peak. Uh, and that just feels a lot better on my foot. And I think the reality still is not everybody can do zero drop. Uh, so I think maybe a little bit safer uh, bank uh, on the Mad River. So again, Saucony, I've been really excited about your product. Uh, I'm excited to get the Mad River 2 on my feet when it comes out uh, this summer. Uh, I really appreciate you sticking to your roots in the Northeast. I think you're doing a great job in terms of your uh, projections, the number of shoes that you've got coming out this year, trail and road. Uh, thank you for your product. Uh, shoot me a message if any of you have any questions uh, on the Mad River or otherwise. Uh, connect with me on Facebook or wherever you want to do that. And uh, maybe we can connect more soon. Uh, thanks for tuning in. We'll talk more here in a bit.